What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, March 15th, 2024. Of course, I am Tim Geddes, and today I am joined by the Texas Treat, Latino Heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds, the globe trotting, head shotting, rooting, tooting, three point shooting, Nitro Rifle. Nah, fuck. You had it, bro. That was it. No. From Twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. I did have it, and then I questioned myself. No, you can't. In the worst way possible. You can't ever do that. Man. Anymore. It was good. It was so good. I was, was so confident, overly confident, cocky, you would say. How you doing, Andy? Uh, I'm great. I mean, it's almost it's almost noon. You know, some people say that maybe this is a great time for us to start the show. Always. <laughs> this is the daily morning show <laughs> it's a great at time. noon. Yeah. I mean, it's morning in Hawaii, right? Exactly. Yeah. Is that true? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. and it's 9 a.m. somewhere. Perfect. And that somewhere is mm -hmm. Hawaii. You, I get you belong in Hawaii. That's what it is. I think that is what I mean. Everybody knows I love the water and surfing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Of course. Oh man, how, how are you looking forward to the weekend here? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially because the weather has really gotten nice here, mm -hmm. Tim. It's it's sunny outside. Mm -hmm. I was sunbathing a little while ago. Yeah. Uh, I saw Snowbike Mike and Roger Picorni go out for a walk. My favorite thing. And Snowbike Mike had to go. He didn't want to get sunburned, so he grabbed his umbrella hat. Of course. And immediately got blown off. And Roger was like, I'm not going to walk with you if you're wearing that. And he's like, I can't get sun on my face. Who knows? Who knows what that uh, guy's up to? But it's beautiful in San Francisco right now. Yeah, it Yesterday, is. I stayed home. Uh, I did a work from home day mm -hmm. and work from home for me was just playing Rise of the Ronin all day. And I was wondering, why is it so hot in my room right now, Tim? I'm wearing a hoodie. I just didn't even bother checking the weather. It's like, oh, oh you know why? It's hot out there. Because it's the sun's beating down on my on my roof right now. It's like 83 in my house right I now. I mean, that's the funniest thing is like, I, I know that you do like the sun, actually. I know mm -hmm. you like me out there, but it is funny that you're like looking forward to the weekend. It's really sunny. And it's like, what's that going to mean for you, Andy? It's long walks, honestly. Okay, okay, I love good, an cool. urban hike. Good, oh, I love, yeah, 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 urban hikes have not really been taking place recently mm -hmm. because of it's the atmospheric cold. rivers. Windy. You can't hike in a river. You just can't do it. You know, it's yeah. been grainy and gross. You're not good at swimming, so. No, I can't swim. Yeah. I can't swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One day I'll We'll learn. work on that, everybody. We'll, well work on Kevin that. keeps on saying, like, let me teach you, and I just cannot think of anything I'd rather do less. I understand that, and I, I'll just stop there. I yeah. understand that. <laughs> but I will say it. I've said it many times. You have never seen a miracle till you've seen Kevin Coelho swim. <laughs> that man is part fish. Wow. And it is, I mean, I haven't seen it in quite a while. But I will never forget. I mean, when he was little, sure, that was fine. But, like, I'll never forget, like, a more modern Kevin, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, like, not a, a tiny little guy Kevin. Like, more of a, like, a substantial man. The, the third Kevin, evolution. The Kevin that you guys know. The Charizard Kevin. And he just jumps in there, and it is just literally doing this wow. in the water. <laughs> it's like, how is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> Think of beauty, everybody, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about video games. So many video games, uh, including 60 video games that were just uh, talked about in the, what exactly is it called here? The Spring Game Showcase, where we partnered with The Mix to show off a whole bunch of cool stuff. The showcase just happened. That's why we're doing Kind of Funny Games Daily Live right now, uh, a little bit later than normal. You can check out that showcase on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So many cool games there. Um, Honestly, there was a ton. Like we had it playing in the the other room and just seeing them all pop up. I'm, I was aware of a lot of them, but I haven't seen the whole thing yet. And I was like, "Damn, there's a lot here." There was a lot of little neat games for sure. Um, I was particularly fond of the one that was like a side scroller that, like, whenever you would jump through a portal, the whole uh, world would shift on its side, and it kind of had like a like a Fez almost sort of vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of awesome things shown out. And remember, wish list them all. Mm -hmm. Go wish list whatever you're into whatever you thought looked cool, because uh, that really just helps out the developer and the publishers to get those games trending on the Steam pages, which is, uh, you know, everybody needs to get their games seen more. And the, the coolest thing about the, this showcase to me was we were over there, a game called Ollie Frog's Toad Skater <laughs> popped up. Hmm. All right. Very clearly inspired by Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And I, I see that catches my eye. I hear some sound effects and I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. That's a Tim game. Seconds later, I hear Joey go, ooh, and I look up, there's this little, like, cute little, like, lamb thing doing some stuff, and she's like, that's a Joey game, you're talking about this Andy game, there was a game for, no matter what your name is, your name has a game out mm -hmm. there in this showcase, so it's Ollie just Frog. really cool, and I, I love how, uh, for the, the format of this, we just continued kind of what we've done for years with the kind of funny game showcase of, like, let's try to group the games, there's gonna be a lot of them, but let's group them into, like, categories that people can be like, maybe not every category is for me, but 
the category that you're interested in, there's probably going to be at least one or two games there that you're going to be like, I want to wish list that and you should do just that. Um, but you guys probably already watched that. You watched the showcase. Now you're leading in here. So we're going to talk about some other stories, including Among Us getting a voice cast. Nintendo might have a new release day strategy and Power World is too successful and a whole bunch more because this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday. We run you through the nerdy news that you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch and podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, support us with the kind of funny membership. You get the shows ad free. You can watch live as we record them and you get a daily exclusive Greg way for a chance to be part of the show. Submit your thoughts and opinions as YouTube super chats as we go and we will get to them, which is really cool and exciting. Some housekeeping for you. PAX East is coming very soon. Mm -hmm. We have GDC first. GDC starts next week. Uh, the fun and shenanigans of us in the mix do not stop with the showcase today. On Monday, all day, we're going to be streaming. Uh, so you definitely want to be hanging out on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or youtube.com slash kind of funny games. We're going to have a bunch of devs. Some of the ones you saw in the showcase come through. Some other ones hanging out with us. We'll play some demos. We'll have a good time. It's just going to be a blast. You excited for this? Yeah, it'll be like last year. What a great hang it was. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of hop on with random devs and other people from the office. We're just all playing games on the desk, talking about exactly what we're showing on the screen. Um, I'm excited to check out some new video games that yep. day. Should be, be a good time. blast. Um, and then after GDC weekends, PAX East begins. And kind of funny, we'll be there in a... Pretty major way, not the most major way possible, but a pretty major way that is very exciting, whether you're going to be there or if you're going to be watching at home, because Game Showdown Live is coming to PAX East with a blast and a crew of guests. If you want to watch Kind of Funny's trivia show live in the PAX audience, it's going down Friday, March 22nd at 1 p.m. in the Albatross Theater. Uh, if you are in Boston, if you're at PAX, please go show up to this panel. Support the boys. It's going to be an absolute blast over there. Um, that one will... It will be live. You will be able to watch that that stream live on one of the Twitch um, PAX channels. PAX Twitch channels is what I meant to say. Unfortunately, we did have a dropout. Ben Starr will not be able to make the, the live cast for that one uh, because uh, he's he's important. <laughs> he really wanted to, though. And I, he feels, I could be I, a I great filler. He, I could be a great fill-in. I, I, well, that, that's the thing. I heard he got sick of all of your impressions of him. Uh, Dang. Andy. I mean, they could go audio only. And Hello, I'm Ben Starr. I'm here to find a victory, and also my brother Joshua. <laughs> like it's easy, it's dude. Easy, everybody. Come on, man. Uh, so was, unfortunately, we had to drop out. Ben Starr will not be able to compete, but we will have him on Game Showdown very soon. Mm. Very soon. Mm. Wink, wink. However, joining the panel is the one and only Iffy. Woo! From, um, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm upset with Blessing here because he unintentionally made a pun and didn't realize it. With the, we had a dropout. Oh. Ben Starr's leave, and yeah, it didn't connect to things. Well, maybe he did. I doubt it. Really? I highly doubt wow, it. Wow, you think yeah. so little of him. Maybe. You know what? I, bless if you're <laughs> watching, which you're probably not. Um, I, I want to know. And I, I, if I'm not crediting you correctly, I would like to apologize. If I am, you know what? I, my money is on yes. Yeah. Well, I, I'd you put think the, he did I'd, it? I'd do the pizza bet on, like, that was intentional by mm, blessing. Mm, okay. Okay. I, I appreciate that you respect him. I do. Um, Snowbike Mike will also join the panel as the official scorekeeper, so get hyped about that. It's going to be a blast. Just be there, have fun, um, but that's not all the fun we're having at PAX East. Two other panels will be hosted by Kind of Funny members, both Mike and Blessing. Mike is doing the Grounded panel for Obsidian on Saturday, March 23rd at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, if you're there at PAX, uh, so you'll be able to check that out at the Albatross Theater, but if you're watching at home, it'll be at uh, the same time Eastern, but 11.30 a.m. Pacific, uh, you'll be able to watch that on twitch.tv slash PAX2, so you'll be able to watch live and support Mike from the comfort of your home, but if you're at PAX, please go show up and support in person, and then just an hour after that, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, you can watch Bless host the Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty panel. That's going to be an absolute blast, and you can watch that on the main Twitch, the main PAX Twitch channel as well if you are watching at home so whether you're going to PAX or just watching from home support the boys it's going to be a good time and speaking of support thank you to our patreon producers carl jacobs kieran hovisapian and delaney twining mm -hmm. uh, today we're brought to you by shady rays and factor but we'll tell you about that later for now let's begin with what is and forever actually no i want to fuck the rope report i want to talk about you rise of the ronin a couple hey. days ago, Bless got to be on the show. He got to give his preview of this game. You haven't been on the show. You haven't been doing it. Like, you've been streaming. You've been doing other stuff. I want to know what you think about this. 
Okay, so we can only talk about Rise of the Ronin in the first couple of hours of gameplay. Yeah. That's the preview mm -hmm. sort of period. Uh, now I'm about 13 hours in, but I'll only talk about the that first little entry section that you experience. Rise of the Ronin from Team Ninja. Uh, I, my, my feelings are very on par with where Blessing is at as well with it, where it's, it's a completely functional and serviceable game. Um, it's... It's a middle-of-the-road quarterback that won't get you a win in the playoffs, Tim. Mm -hmm. But he'll keep you afloat, and you know, you're know you not going to do anything miraculous with him. I think my biggest problem with Rise of the Ronin is it, it doesn't do anything terrible, but it doesn't blow me away in any way. Um, it is... This is Team Ninja's Assassin's Creed. This is Team Ninja's Ghost of Tsushima. It's an open-world game. Uh, you're not necessarily... like. In their prior games, Team Ninja put out the Neo uh, series, Neo 1 and 2. They put out Wolong, where you're fighting, you know, some larger-than-life beasts at some times, or, like, other type Ronin characters. In this game, you're ma mainly just fighting, like, a bunch of humans so far. Um, and I think the game is just completely okay. I think it's going to review pretty well, because, again, it doesn't do anything atrocious in any way. Okay. It's just, like, the most middle-of-the-road experience that... I, I wanted to be blown away by it story-wise, and I probably shouldn't expect that by now with Team Ninja, because um, especially with my time in Wolong, like, there's not a whole lot else aside from the combat that is keeping me into the experience. And for some people, that's going to be all they want. They just mm -hmm. they want that Team Ninja combat, and the combat is good. I, I do have fun with a lot of the different uh, encounters and bosses and... You know, should I be dodging more than I should be trying to parry and get the enemy stagger meter up? I probably should be dodging more, but I, I sort of have a lot of fun trying to memorize these patterns. And this uh -huh. enemy goes, you know, slash, slash, uppercut, slash, and you ding, 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 and it feels good to do that. Um, but there's just not a whole lot more meat on the bone, unfortunately. Do you think that your feelings uh, towards it right now, that again, not negative, just not kind of where you want them to be, do you think that it has anything to do with the timing of Dragon's Dogma coming out soon and then also just similar games having uh, been coming out a lot, whether it is more on the soul side of things of you playing and expecting more from combat, but then also get, expecting more from story from other type of games and this kind of doing all of those things just not quite as well? No, I, I think a lot of it was maybe just building up expectations in my mind and seeing this game being shown off and go, oh, this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Maybe like, maybe there's more of like an A-team working on this title, oh. right? Um, there, there are some really fun combat encounters, but it is very run-of-the-mill. And again, this could be the perfect game for you, right? Like I... I talk about my time with Ghost of Tsushima and how the first time I played it, it was like wrong place, wrong time. I wasn't feeling it. I dropped off pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I decided to pick Ghost of Tsushima back up and it became my retroactive game of the year where it surpassed uh, yep. The Last of Us. Not only because I really enjoy the combat and I enjoyed sort of going to the different enemy encampments and you know trying to... Uh, how many ways can you skin a cat sort of thing? How many ways can I take out this little base? Should I go stealth? Should I just try to take on the whole group and leveling your character up? And now I can do like three back-to-back -back executions so I can go doon, doon, doon and does all that cool little cutscene stuff. But it was the story and the characters and the side quests, uh, the stories within these side quests that really blew me away with Ghost of Tsushima. And I... Uh, Again, by this point, I wasn't blown away by anything in Wolong Fallen Dynasty. So I maybe that's just my fault for assuming this game would be a bit more. I think it's trying to do more. It just really isn't executing a whole lot, unfortunately. I, uh, As far as like visuals go, I know visuals have been a hot topic with the game in yeah. terms of like, this game doesn't look that ugly. And some people are like, oh, it looks bad for a PS5 game. Um, I am pretty underwhelmed by the visuals, especially with it being exclusive to that hardware. Usually when, like, I still look back at Bluepoint's Demon Souls and, like, that game came out in fucking 2020 and it still looks better than so many other games out there. Um, this game doesn't look like it couldn't have been cross-platform. 
Okay. This game looks like it could have come out on a PS4 Pro and Xbox Series uh, or Xbox One X and everything. So you're saying that visually, like fidelity wise, but what about in terms of the frame rate? Because I know that matters to you probably more than the visuals. Themselves. Frame rate's good. Uh, you do have a you have a performance mode, you have fidelity mode, and then you have ray tracing mode. I think in fidelity mode you can choose uncapped frame rate where it'll it'll it's going to try to keep you above 30 frames per second but it may raise up to like 40 or so we have breaking news dropout was not meant to be a pun lol for blessing out of Shit. Elliot, junior i know you well blessing i love you <laughs> damn it blessing you let me down man i had my money on yes like, of course that was meant to be a pun um i think subconsciously it was he's a smart cookie yeah possibly possibly um they uh, ray tracing mode i think tries to keep it at 30 and then fidelity mode which is like i'm assuming trying to get to 4k maybe not natively but up sampling to yeah. 4k in some ways uh but it's uncapped frame rate so it, it stays at 30 but it'll go above if possible and then frame rate tries to keep you at 60 and i'm not sure what the resolution is we'll wait to see what digital foundry finds in there but for uh frame rate mode doesn't look bad it, it this is not the same frame rate mode that I've experienced with Final Fantasy Rebirth, where uh, performance and frame rate mode on Rebirth looks really muddy and kind of gross at, at a lot of moments. Um, this game looks fine, fidelity-wise, like sharpness-wise. But it's just like, visually, the characters have always looked great. Team Ninja, their character creator is great. When you have those cutscenes that are like zoomed in on them, they look awesome. The characters look great. Can you tell the story? Or are you not allowed to tell the story? That's a different... Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't wait till you can. Y'all, strap in. They can't, At some point, I'm so excited he's going to be that. able to say something. I'm so excited for funny. that. Um, but the uh, their character art is great. I think my, my issue with it is just maybe they're running it on an old engine. Maybe it's just not like the most modern, right? And from software, never is top of the line in terms of frame rate or or performance or visuals. But their art direction surpasses all of that. So it really, really makes up and kind of carries the load. Um, my dream for the next Team Ninja project, like, I want them to make, uh, I want them to make a Sifu-style game Ooh. where, c because their combat is so good. They, they have such a great understanding of what's, what's fun and how do you kind of, um, not necessarily, like, overcomplicate things, but they can add a lot of different... There's a lot of nuance to the combat that you can that can be explored, where it's not just hacking and slashing. There, in Rise of the Ronin, there are so many different stances, similar to Ghost of Tsushima. There's so many different weapon types, uh, and there's just a lot of variety with the combat. And I, I feel like they went the opposite way here, where I would have preferred a smaller-scale project that isn't like a 30 or 40 or 50 hour. I don't know how much long Rise of the Ronin is, but it took me about 30 hours to finish um, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. I wish they went the opposite way. And I don't want to say make a roguelite because I feel like that's <laughs> sometimes just like the end all yeah. be all for a lot of these recommendations. But make a game where like there's, there's a lot of style and personality in what you're looking at because they're going for realism here. They're, that's... They're not going for like ultra realism in terms of like, hey, this is look how insane look, cyberpunk looks. Horse balls, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's no horse balls or anything like that, but their their character textures and the visual uh, style of everything is this is you know meant to be more realistic than stylized, right? I kind of wish that they took it just the opposite direction and said, let's let our combat shine and let's impress you with um, visuals in like maybe a cell shaded way or in the way that we saw uh, No Rest for the Wicked kind of blow me away visually where it's all very hand-painted textures. Yeah, um, Yeah. so far I'm just very, very underwhelmed with Rise of the Ronin. Um, and, and that's a bummer because I thought March 22nd was going to be like massive heavy hitter. We had yeah. these two big games coming out, these two highly anticipated um, franchises, Dragon's Dogma making its return, and a PS5 exclusive. A, P a PS5 exclusive with Rise of the Ronin. And it's just, yeah, it bums me out. Do you see yourself seeing the end of this? Uh, until I can start playing Dragon's Dogma 2, probably not. Um, but Greg did ask me, like, hey, try to play as much as you can until we get the Dragon's Dogma 2 codes, if we get them, because um, like, I'd like for you to have the most time in it. So I'm making my way through it. And again, cool. it's... It's not a bad experience. It's just so lackluster. Like yeah. I, I, I'm waiting for 
that big cutscene to make me go, holy shit, this is crazy, right? And for for the rebuttals to what I'm saying right now, for people to be like, well, Team Ninja's never really been about that. Well, then don't try to go for that. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're trying to make this narrative experience matter and kind of make you feel stuff. And it's just not really hitting uh, in any of those spots. So uh, again, that that's, I keep on wanting, I want to keep on harping on that is like, if you're not great at that, then quit trying to go for that, you know, because you're just going to let people down. And yeah. uh, Wolong let me down quite a bit with that. I think me and Blessing both gave Wolong a three out of five okay score where it was totally fine to play, but everything else is just so blah. Mm. Um, there just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of magic. Blessing called it swag. I said it was missing sauce. Yeah. Uh, it's just like there's nothing really at the end of all of this that makes me feel like I'm playing for a greater reason other than just to go to combat encounter to combat encounter but it's a it could be a totally perfect game for you if you just want to turn your brain off go to that encampment clear out all the bad guys and they show you the time lapse of the the, the sun the days changing and all the villagers coming back in and now it's a free little it. town or whatever but it's like other than that i i don't i wouldn't recommend this if you were wondering what to pick between dragon's dogma 2 or rise of the ronin um, I would say maybe wait for Rise of the Ronin to go on a sale or something like that. Okay. Well, there you go, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're going to get into story number one of the day because it is time for what is the forever will be <laughs> the Roper Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We have five stories today. A baker's dozen. It's so funny, just the little muscle memory things or lack thereof when you go out of order. But Barrett cutting to the jib, I was like, oh, rope report time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's so <laughs> funny. Uh, story number one, Among Us animated series gets a voice cast. This comes from Joe Otterson at Variety. And this article is very funny to me. I want to read a lot of it because uh, there's there's just a lot more detail than I would have expected them to give here, Andy. I, I was, uh, first off, I didn't know this was a thing until I heard you and Joey Me mention. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking at Twitter really this morning, which is why I'm also excited for a future story coming up uh -huh. where we get to talk about Hyper Light Breaker because I've seen nothing of okay, that. Cool. Um, and I'm super stoked for it. But I immediately thought this was going to be a dis, uh, disbussing film. Post. Me too. I did too. Yeah. It's not. It is It is real here. The Among Us animated series in the works at CBS Studios has added its first voice cast members. Variety has learned. Randall Park, Yvette Nicole Brown, mm. Ashley Johnson uh, will all lend their voices to the animated adaptation of the popular mobile game. And Elijah Wood as well. The player. last of Among Us. Elijah Wood. Uh, Variety exclusively reported the series was in development back in June 2023. It hails from CBS Eye Animation Productions and Inner Sloth, the independent game studio behind Among Us. Per the official logline, the series is based on the premise of the game. Namely, members of your crew have been replaced by an alien shapeshifter intent on causing confusion, sabotaging the ship, and killing everyone. Root out the imposter or fall victim to its murderous designs. Uh, Titmouse, who made uh, Big Mouth and Star Trek Lower Decks, which are both beloved series, mm -hmm. will serve as the animation studio for the series. Along with uh, Dennis Forrest Willard, Marcus Brominder, and Carl Nicer of Inner Sloth, will also executive produce uh, along with a bunch of people um, over from Titmouse. No network or streamers currently attached, but those conversations are said to be ongoing. CBSI Animation Productions produces in association with Inner Sloth. So, interesting. Awesome cast, right? Incredible lineup here. Love seeing Ashley getting this as well. Oh, yeah. um, very, very cool. No streamer, no actual sign on for this project. An interesting move, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because with this lineup and the, the talent behind this from an animation perspective and the, the studio itself working on it, I think that this thing's going to see the light of day and happen, right? Yeah, I mean, especially with how... I mean, you look at the numbers on what random sort of role play Among Us videos do on YouTube. Like my nephew would just randomly click a some random YouTuber doing like voiceovers for this like whatever little o uh, ops that they're doing in there uh, or ocs rather. Um, yeah, this seems like it's going to be kind of a slam dunk with that audience. And this, I feel like this lineup of the cast is like such a great. Hey, look at us. This is a something that you're gonna yeah. want to buy. You're gonna want on your platform, whether you're it legitimizes Amazon, it. It legitimizes yeah. it, and I feel like makes it something like uh, it feels like a surefire bet 
for some level of success at the very least uh, for whatever streamer it ends up on. Uh, but what I thought was funny is how in-depth they went for character descriptions in this Variety article. Oh, let me All hear right? it. Randall Park will voice Red, the captain of the Skeld. He's a people pleaser, blowhard. His task is leadership, confidence. Fun fact, failed upwards. Oh, good. <laughs> Ashley Johnson will voice Purple, chief of security, safety, suspicion, and sarcasm. Their task, wet blanket. What? Fun fact, trust issues. Oh. Event Nicole Brown will voice Orange, HR, spineless corporate shell. Task, Eliminate redundancy, redund redundantly. <laughs> Fun fact: fires you over email. That's what I would have assumed when I looked at Orange. I was like, I feel like Orange the vibes. that type of person. Yeah. yeah. And then Elijah Wood will voice Green, the unpaid intern. Happy to be there. <laughs> Ask whatever they're told. Fun fact: gets paid in pizza. I love so, that. This is weird. Like it's weird to put it in the article this way, and this is just kind of how the article ends. <laughs> and I was like, huh, but. I think it does give a good vibe of what the show is going to be. And I'm like, this sounds like it could be pretty funny. It sounds like uh, the way you read that, it, I could imagine that being the character title cards mm -hmm. of like the way like Borderlands does it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, this, this tells me that they are going for a certain tone that's going to be funny. And immediately I'm wondering, um, do you remember that Super Mario Kart parody that Saturday Night Live did with Pedro Pascal? Yeah. Like I, Diva and who Mike Diva did that. Oh, really? Okay. I immediately, I was just like, man, I, I wish that we had like an overly serious tone for a little short, uh, you know, with like mega stars. Right. Yeah. Uh, but this would be the next best thing. Uh, I, I do wonder like, what is the, is it just like a one episode who, or a several episode who done it? Is it, going to encompass like multiple whodunits i don't really know what the what the legs are on this project yeah i mean i think it, yeah one season is a story i imagine yeah. and it's if it's animated 20 minute episodes like i don't think it needs to be that crazy i feel like knives out uh yeah like that type of thing just like adding up to something um but yeah this this sounds cool sounds interesting i am not into among us but i'm into the concept and i'm like i don't know that this is going to be something that i stick with but if it's good why not watch it sounds like a fun cast and everything about it lines up to be like yeah it sounds like it could be an entertaining show so we'll see what where a crazy economy goes. among us has created yeah like to just think about the origins and having that animal crossing story of just hitting at the right, right time. time everybody's at home all the big streamers are playing it together it became the meta for so long. I got so sick of it. <laughs> Just everything lining up where it's like out of nowhere, this massive success happens that no one could have seen coming because it just seems so ridiculous. Story number two, Power World Deb says massive profits are too big for a studio with our size to handle. Uh, this comes from Wesley Yinpool at IGN. The boss of Power World developer Pocket Pair has said the company can't handle the massive profits the game has generated. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, I mean... We've heard this before with like Flappy Bird, right? Like, just like the, the teams just was not prepared for a level of success. We have like, more problems, our, uh, Andy. Our safe, uh, we can't put them any more money in the safe. <laughs> Power World launched in January and overnight became one of the biggest games in the world, setting records not only on Steam, but on Xbox Game Pass, where it is the biggest third party game launch ever. So far, the $30 quote, Pokemon with guns, crafting and survival game has seen an incredible 25 million players with 15 million copies sold on Steam and 10 million players on Xbox. Speaking in an interview with Bloomberg, Pocket Pair boss Takuro Mizobi confirmed, uh, Mizobe, uh, Pal World costs less than 1 billion yen, $6.7 million to make and has made tens of billions of yen <laughs> in wow. profit. For context, 10 billion is around $67.2 million. It's an amount that is, quote, too big for a studio with our size to handle. Uh, he later clarified he has no intention of expanding or offering shares in the company. Rather, he wants Pocket Pair to remain small. It's currently 55 people. He also said he's open to a partnership or acquisition, but insisted he has not state started buyout talks with Microsoft. I think that's a very interesting uh, piece of this whole thing, uh, perhaps to the chagrin of Sarah Bond. Uh, mm -hmm. who just wants this on as many screens every, as possible. Every screen, Tim. Perhaps more pressing, Pocket Pair is in talks to bring Power World to more platforms, suggesting a potential PlayStation 5 and Nintendo console release in the future. 
interesting slap thing. in the face yeah. and put it on Nintendo. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? You got to assume, you know, the people over at Game Freak are too much money. They're making too much money. That's their complaint. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> like, yo, be cool. This is our secret, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing this forever. <laughs> Why would you put that out there, man? Um, th- th- it's it's a fascinating thing that I. It, it's it just seems kind of like a brag. <laughs> like, why would you put this out? You know, I, I think it's really funny that this is your read on it because, like, to me, I kind of see it more as like a like the, it's obviously only being talked about because they're being talked to by Bloomberg, which is they're trying to like figure out who you're being acquired by. Right. right. Because I feel like that's that is the next step here is like when there is such a massive hit, it's like, all right, what do we do with this? How do we do it again? How do more people make money from this and profit? So right. um, them coming out and just being like, we're trying to stay small, admirable. Right. Like that seems like the right move. But are, is their small team capable of supporting this game in the way it needs to be supported for the amount of money coming in? I think that's the, the bigger takeaway uh, of it. Right. Be- because for me, the way I read into it, it's like. Uh, it, it's a lot like Walter White being like, we got to find a way to la- launder this money. Like, we're making too much money. We cannot hide this. Nobody buy any cars. We need to hide these funds that are coming in because they're illegal. Um, this uh, this sort of money, and I, I get what you mean, right? Because you you still need to support this game in a way that shows the players and the uh, people in the sort of Powell ecosystem that there's a future for this game. And we want this to continue for years and years to come. But, you know, on the flip side, we don't want to grow to a 400 person studio. What's sort of, you know, the, the path of least resistance here? What's the easiest middle ground that we could find? And I, I would say, uh, you know, make cooler bosses. <laughs> make uh-huh. cooler boss fights is one of my suggestions. Because like, I, I feel like I got super into Power World and it fell off kind of immediately once I saw what it was. Um, which was like, I, I didn't love how quickly you were able to get through a lot of the systems. I feel like it gave you a lot of, um, suddenly I feel like I, I already have a factory, you know what I mean? And a lot of that was like the crew I'm playing with, obviously, with uh, Chris Anka and yeah. J.D. Neal and Washburn just doing all sorts of shit. But I just feel like I, I wanted there to be more resistance from the game. And it did feel like pretty quickly, suddenly I, you know, I'm getting a gun and I, I don't love that. I didn't love that I was getting a gun in the game, Tim. Mm. I don't want to be shooting Pokemon. Let me use a bow and arrow. Yeah. It's yeah. the easiest oh, thing Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then you're okay with that. That's, yeah. that's very funny. Well, because I could, I could aim for the heart and then when I pull out the arrow, I can put my hand on it and say a little prayer for it. Oh my like God. Like an avatar. Like an <laughs> of avatar. course. Of course. Yeah. The way I want Giving it back to the forest. Oh you know? my God. I see you. Uh, the other thing here, I think, is them kind of, uh, and, and this, I, I you bring it up the bragging thing. I see it more as a preparation, uh, a state of intent. Hey, this is who we are. We have a small team. We're making a lot of money. We're not looking to expand. We are looking to partner or we're looking to be acquired. And hey, we're valuable, right? Like get that out there. Get people talking so that anybody that is interested is like, all right, we're interested. And we're going to talk to you. And like we we now know that there is a potential for this to, to go through. And also... We're not talking to Microsoft yet. It might seem like we are, but if you want to talk to us, you can. Do do we think that they've already crossed the apex of this is as high as it'll ever get? Apex? Yes. But that doesn't mean there isn't immense value still, right? Like think about who how many people are still playing this game and 61,000 on Steam right that's, now. That's fucking crazy, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't I I Apex, I feel like is almost a unimportant term at this point for a game like this because when we're talking about this like incredible out of nowhere success yeah there's going to be a spike at some point the thing is how long can they get that the the bell curve to like is that the right term i don't know what the fuck i'm saying yeah yeah no for sure like how do they slow the the downfall of that as much as possible and still bring in millions of dollars billions of yen it's it's wild because you kind of need to everything has to hit perfectly for one of these success stories and i think ideally what you would want is your game to come out and not you know take every fucking news story for the following you know two weeks or whatever talking about this many sales this many sales like of course that's a lot of money obviously so you would never say no to those sales immediately no indie dev would ever like not want that to be in their future but 
you know, I, I see the successes of, of a game like Hades, which I feel like Hades really was the last of its kind of hmm. coming out and not, you know, Baldur's Gate would be actually. Baldur's Gate okay. would be the last of its kind. Uh, but Hades, very, very similar last story. Of, I'm, I'm very interested in what you're about to say. Last very of its kind, top all games that came out with the, months ago. <laughs> very similar story where they're in early access for a while. They come out in early access and they aren't blowing anybody away by any means. People see promise, but it's not every new story where people are wondering, should we put this early access game on our game of the year list? Like that's not really a whole lot of conversation that's happening in the industry. And then when the game comes out and it finally has the 1.0 release, hey, everybody, it's out. Oh my God, it is making waves across the whole industry. Where I feel like now it's almost reversed where it hits early access. Holy shit, this brand new early access game. Massive, okay, massive, massive. Saying. Yeah. And then when the 1.0 comes out, it, it does feel to me, at least like with Pal World, I don't know if I'll come back for a 1.0 release. Hey, the game is actually fully feature uh you know it's what's the word i'm looking feature for complete. yeah feature complete it's it's fully out now i don't feel like i would be stoked to kind of make my return to that where there are some um other titles that i feel like i'll wait for that 1.0 release you know what i mean yeah totally get what you're saying but other side to it you might not but what if 1.0 comes out on switch and playstation 5 all of a sudden, brand new audience could be massive. For the very first time, you know yeah. what I mean. Will that be part of the game of the year conversation? That's a different conversation. What, what it would but take for me, success. yeah. What it would take for me, I I would say personally, is the news comes out, 1.0 is out. Holy shit, this game is completely different. You don't need like similar to when we had the Halo season five, Halo Infinite season five drop yeah, yeah, several yeah. months ago. Last at the end of last year, being like, dude. Now is the time to get back into Pal World. If you were kind of like eh, on it at the beginning, or maybe you know you, you were super stoked with it for the first five hours, and then just kind of immediately fell off, this is the game you were kind of like promised initially. I think that is what would need to happen for me to want to get back into this world. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't know if I don't I, I don't know if there's a game like Baldur's Gate or, or like Hades where it does come out in early access. And it's not everybody's talking about it. And then when it finally releases, it explodes and becomes like the holy shit. This is one of the best things of all time. I think we're going to see a lot more of those. I think just with the nature of how games are made, I, I don't think it's going to become like a regular pattern. But I, I do think that those are not the end of the story. I think that they're kind of the beginning of a new type of, mm -hmm. of, of system. But I, I do think you're right that there is that flip of early access kind of like more than ever having this big boom and then just a die off where the yeah. 1.0 doesn't. Uh, mean too much but we'll see uh andy i really want to talk to you about hyper light breaker but you're gonna have to wait no just a couple more minutes because here is a word from our sponsors this episode is brought to you by shady rays an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300 000 five star reviews they are on a mission to match affordability with durability making top quality shades accessible to everyone they have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium Color Rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and greens. Here at Kind of Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it's me looking dope doing my Pokemon Go walks, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it they've got lost and broken protection so you're covered from day one and if you don't love your shades exchange or return them for free within 30 days exclusively for y'all shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season head to shadyrays.com and use code kf20 for 20 dollars off each pair of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people again that's shadyrays.com and use code kf20 for 20 dollars off each pair of polarized sunglasses Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Joey has been loving her Factor meals because every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prep cooking or cleanup needed and factor is flexible for your schedule get as much or as little as you need
paid by choosing your meals every week. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off. And we're back. Story number three. Hyperlight Breaker launches in early access this summer. This comes from Rebecca Valentine at IGN. Developer Heart Machine has announced that its upcoming co-op roguelite prequel to Hyperlight Drifter, Hyperlight Breaker, will launch in early access this summer on PC. Hyperlight Breaker is set decades prior to the events of Drifter. While Drifter was a top-down, initially single-player action game, Breaker is a 3D roguelite open-world game with optional co-op. Players control breakers, mercenaries. That's so fucking cool. <laughs> they control breakers, mercenaries sent out into the procedurally generated overgrowth on missions to overthrow an enemy known as the Abyss King. To do so, they must defeat bosses known as crowns, who are themselves unlocked by defeating powerful elite monsters. Currently, Heart Machine is estimating that Hyper Light Breakers' early access period will last roughly a year. Console versions have yet to be announced. Andy, what say you? I just got goosebumps watching this. Like I, I, I've just been so excited about this game. I think Heart Machine has the right mind for what feels good combat wise and what looks and feels good vibe wise. And uh, knowing the amount of variety they're going to offer in this, which is also super exciting, because um, Hyperlight Drifter is like one of my personal favorites of all time. And um, you know, we had Solar Ash come out two, three years ago, which. I enjoyed, but you know, wasn't in love with by any means because I just kind of wanted more of like the hyperlight world or mm -hmm. just more of that style of game and hyperlight breaker stuff. Can you just bring it back up, Barrett? Because oh, he, <laughs> he just ran out. Oh, damn it, damn it. Um, it's all good. Um, I'm just, I, I'm just really, really excited and jazzed up about it because I. It looks cool. Man. It was meant to come out, I believe, in February or March of this year, and um, obviously, you know, it's hard to make a game, so you got to delay it as much as you can because. You know, a delayed game, sometimes shit. Yeah. A good game, sometimes, sometimes also shit. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so stoked for actually hopping in and Sunday's the day where I get to finally play Hyperlight Breaker. That is so exciting. So I can't exciting. wait to hear what you think. Because like, I feel like this is one of those things where you, you're expecting it to just feel right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, not only feel right, but I've, I've always just loved their visual aesthetic. The, yeah. the bright neon colors, the... The aquas and the the fuchsias and all that shit is just totally my my vibe. Um, but one thing I loved was the style of Hyperlight Drifter and knowing wanting to see that sort of translated into 3D, where you have a gun and you are slashing a sword and you're dodging these, um, you know, sort of scripted attacks. That I don't know. The boss fights look awesome. The whole concept of it seems really neat. And every dev diary I've seen about it where they're talking about how this procedural world is made seems like they're doing some really cool next level shit in terms of engineering uh, on the back end. Cause they're just like, this is one of the hardest things we've tried to pull off. There's not a whole, like there aren't really any games that have tried to do this sort of procedural world in the way that we're doing it. And so I'm just sort of stoked to kind of also learn about what the troubles were behind that dev process and, and the wins and the successes and the losses, if there were any, I, I'm just beyond exto uh, stoked for this. It feels weird that like a game that is so associated with you gets a, a follow-up that is this. Yeah. <laughs> like, it kind of just seems like uh, they're in there, aren't they? Yeah. They're in your head. No, for sure, dude. And, you know, I've been, uh, for a while I was, you know, a bit worried about the future of, of Heart Machine and kind of where they were going. And um, again, when, when Solar Ash comes out, I'm like, God, I love Heart Machine. This is not what I wanted from that studio. It'd be like, uh, it, it'd be like, I don't know, Naughty Dog making a not super, uh, you know, linear story uh, based game or whatever. And so Solar Ash was like totally fine for the game that it was, just not what I wanted. But then to get that initial 2D animation that they debuted, that was just ridiculously stylish and flashy. And to see what this game is and what it's trying to be, it's going to be multiplayer as well, I believe. Um, I'm just beyond stoked about, you know, what Heart Machine is going to offer us. And yeah, Sunday, I'm so excited. When I got that email, 
to be like, hey, do you want to uh, have a little like session here at GDC to play I play Breaker? I was like, it's the fastest I've responded yeah. to an email, yeah. dude. Awesome, so exciting man. for it. So excited for you and so excited to hear what you think about this. Uh, moving on, though, to story number four, a little bit of a follow-up from a story that we talked about the last couple days here. Saber confirms continued work on a number of titles, uh, including Space Marine 2. This comes from Grace Benfall at GameSpot. Saber Interactive COO Tim Willidis confirmed that the studio is still at work on a number of titles after it split from former owner Embracer. Uh, he tweeted out, I have received a lot of questions concerning the status of some of our previously announced projects now that Saber has separated from Embracer. I'm happy to confirm we're still working on a number of titles, including Warhammer 40K, Space Marine 2, John Carpenter's Toxic Commando, and Jurassic Park Survival. We're so excited about these titles and can't wait to share more with everyone soon. Embracer's deal with Saber Interactive was valued at $217 million, though Saber CEO Matthew Karch uh, reportedly purchased 4A Games and Zen Studios via stock options, raising the total value of the deal to $500 million. Embracer's retaining the rights to 14 games in development at Saber, and many of the exact games are unknown, though, though 4A Games' next AAA project is included. So just a little bit more info about the status of some things, which, you know, recently as everything's been acquired or consolidated or everything in between closed, there's been a lot of questions of like, what about the projects they're working on? What's going on? So just a little bit more insight on where they're at there. Yeah, good. I mean, it's always great to get updates to know that those projects you're looking forward to are not in limbo by any means. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I kind of forgot Jurassic Park Survival was one of their titles, mm -hmm. which is uh, that game looks pretty sick. But Space Marine 2, I'm very, very excited for that. Yep. Uh, and then our final story from the day. This is an interesting one. This is uh, definitely could have been a Wii News section, but I, I feel like there's something to talk about here. So Nintendo seems to have changed something about its game releases. This comes from Chris Pereira on GameSpot, but it was first noticed uh, by Noble on, on uh, Threads, technically, is where, mm. where it was seen. For years, anyone looking forward to a Nintendo game in the U.S. could generally plan on digging in uh, on a Friday, be it a major release like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or a smaller one like Everybody Want to Switch. Nintendo has set the release date for most games it publishes on Fridays. Yeah. Not anymore. It seems <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, not anymore, it seems. With the Switch heading toward what's reportedly the last full year as Nintendo's current gen console, the company has hit fast forward, at least for its next set of games. Whereas its most recent games, including another code recollection and uh recollection. Recollection? I don't know. And I Mario think it's versus meant to be both. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank it's you. Like, it, I appreciate we're we're that. recollecting on this, but it's also a new collection. Exactly. Uh, Mario it's similar Donkey to Blessing sort of a dropout. Or it is and yeah, isn't pun, at the same yeah. time. Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, as well as its next, Princess Peach Showtime, are all scheduled for Fridays. The, um, the recent Mario Day batch of releases now has Nintendo published games releasing on Thursdays. Both Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, May 23rd, and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, June 27th, are slated for Thursday releases. This follows suit with Endless Ocean Luminous, which had a Thursday, May 2nd date revealed during February's Nintendo Direct, though at that time, that appeared like it could have been a one-off exception for something that may not be considered a marquee Nintendo game. Even during the years-long run of Friday releases, there's been exceptions, such as Kirby's Dream Buffet or Pikmin 1 and 2 launching on Wednesdays, though the latter was a surprise out-today launch. But with three of Nintendo's releases in Q2 all launching on Thursday, this might be a signal the company's making a change, at least with the default day of the week it favors. It's possible this pr period could prove to be uh, anomalous and that Nintendo will go back to Fridays in the future. We've reached out to the company for comment on why it made the change for these upcoming games. In the more distant past, Nintendo games were released on Sundays in the U.S. Do you remember that? I, sure I do. do not, no. <laughs> I sure do. Uh, it's routinely eschewed es what the U.S. industry standard Tuesday releases have done. How recent was that? I mean, that was Game Boy Advance days. Oh, shit, yeah. No. I, I was not a, a Game Boy Advance dude. Um, we've increasingly seen more companies shift to later in the week with its launches over the last decade. Uh, maybe some time before we get another Nintendo release date to further prove or disprove the shift to Thursdays. Its release calendar for 2024 is unusually light at this point. Beyond the three recently dated games, beyond, we know Metroid Prime 4 is coming, though Nintendo continues to list its launch date as TBA, and Pokemon Legends ZA, meanwhile, isn't due out until 2025. So we don't know anything past June here, um, but we can kind of assume there'll be Thursday release dates. Is this mind blowing? No, but it is just kind of an interesting shift. And like, it is a curious thing of like, I wonder why. And it just, I always enjoy the kind of trying to think through the strategy of 
Why would they do that? Is it to separate from other launches? Is it just to have they found success with their their digital like load-ins coming in at 9 p.m.? And that the time zone's affecting something. Like, I'm not so sure, but it's fun to ponder. It's like movie releases, Tim. Like, yeah. you get that Thursday midnight show in, and now it's Monday at, you know, 2 p.m. And <laughs> just keeps on the moving. Weekend forward. numbers are in, and it's an entire week yeah. of numbers. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> totally makes sense. I mean, yeah, it could be a numbers thing. It could be a, here's what our first week of sales looks. And yep. you have a, a bonus day in there to, to toss in. Um, yeah, super fascinating. We'll see what that means. Uh, when you mentioned Metroid Prime still being TBA, Metroid Prime 4, I, I would just love if, like, a year from now, it's deleted from everywhere, and they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. What the about. hell? Like, you, they just gaslight they just, the yeah, shit out of us? Yeah, they just deny the shit out of it. <laughs> it would be amazing. <laughs> so, let's talk about Metroid Prime 4. I've had this conversation no less than 10,000 times with Bless, but I don't think I've ever had it with you, Andy. When do we see it? And now let me tell you, because the conversation we've had a million times is switch to, let's say it's March, right? That just feels pretty much assured at this point, March, 2025. Yeah. Right. That means that we have from July to December with nothing from Nintendo. I don't think you see it until switch Two is fully confirmed, whether it's that same showing, whether it's on a screen where, there's a, a, a woman and her, you know, fiance playing games on the couch or some shit. Like, we'll see it in a screen there or it'll be fully shown off. Um, like, I don't think without the Switch 2 being confirmed by Nintendo, like, in a way that there's press releases out for it, we won't see it in Metroid Prime 4. So you think it's going to be a launch title then? Y yes. Uh... I think it's going to be, yes, yeah, I'll say yes. I think it's going to be a launch title. I think it'll be not shown off until we get confirmation that Switch 2 is, you know, here it is, here's what the thing is, here's the hardware, there's pictures of it, there's a young lady and her fiancé on the couch playing it, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, interesting. There's a little dog there in the corner, too. He's playing, yeah. too. That's the golden retriever. The 10 dogs, they're back. Smiling for in no reason. In real life this time. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's my assumption. Because hmm. I, I just don't know what... I don't think they show it without like confirming that Switch 2. Like, they're going to show off Metroid Prime 4 and be like, and we are taking advantage of this new hardware. We are uh, ray trace, what not, whatever you're getting in the, in the uh, I guess with PS4 Pro style hardware, maybe not, but. Well, PS4 Pro had ray tracing. No, it had HDR. We're taking full advantage of it. It's going to be one of those sort of like show off things, you know? Yeah. That's my assumption. Bear, where are you at with all this conversation? We've had this conversation 10,000 times, Tim. Um, I think uh, after thinking about it a lot, I, I don't think it'll be a Switch 2 launch um, just because, and granted, there's arguments for and against it of like just typically Metroid is not a console seller. Um, it is not like the, the big franchise, but also there was a time where Zelda wasn't that, right? And so it's like a, a weird push and pull of where Nintendo's uh, mindset is at when it comes to can, do they feel confident in making Metroid a launch title console seller? I, I personally don't know. Uh, I personally, I'm not confident that they feel confident in that. Um, I could see it coming this year as like the last big bang of the, the, the Nintendo Switch. And then you have something else uh, for the Switch too. It's either that or they hold it even later for when we're deeper into the Switch 2 and more Switches have been like, in the hands of people. Um, I am so with 100% that, with you. Though. Yeah. Like I, I think it's either, or I don't think it's the like launch window or launch title type of thing, which makes me more confident that it's most likely this year is like a final uh, switch title. And then maybe again, we don't know what the cross uh, kind of like um, not progression, but like the, what is it? Um, generation. Yeah. Cross generation. Like, will Switch 1 games work on Switch 2 and all that stuff. I could see it launching this year, and then it has some enhancements for the launch of Switch 2, if that's what is going to happen with that console. Yeah, it's a lot of hopium for me, and I get it, but like, I, I think right now I'm, I'm getting more and more confident that, Switch, that Metroid Prime 4 will be this year on Switch, and that we will also get the two Zelda ports from the Wii U, because I just feel like Nintendo's going to want to maintain the momentum 
of the Switch 1 all the way to the end to transition to the Switch 2. And like, if we really don't get anything for that, at that point, it would be nine months. That's not good, you know, because we're already dealing with the luigi's mansion 2 is coming so it's like i just feel like we need something more we already don't have a pokemon this fall um but is metroid prime 4 ready that is the biggest question that i feel like until we know that all of this is just a fun little conversation yeah you know yeah uh i mean i also just i'm just so fascinated of you know what is happening behind the scenes there what you know with all the dates changing with this one title that <laughs> debuted my first year at Kind of Funny in 2017. Was it 2017? Yeah, because I was the first year I think we yeah. went to E3. And to still be here in 2024 and have had, you know, nothing since then. It's just, it's wild that, like, that even happened. The reveal was one of my favorite moments ever. Like, I'll never forget the space and us sitting there and we see it and the Samus logo forms and I was beside myself. Like, I couldn't believe they were actually announcing that Prime 4 was freaking real. I don't know if they believed that they were doing it either. <laughs> I know. I mean, it was five years ago or some shit like that, right? <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, it was 2017, so. Oh, Jesus, even yeah. more. Seven years ago. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Again, this is uh, something that's happening in chat right now, talking about, like, Metroid isn't a seller until it is, just like uh, Zelda. But, mm -hmm. like, if you look back, like, Metroid Prime, like, as a um, kind of, like, universally, like, praised uh, Metroid game, that sold in total, what is it, 2.84 million copies and, like, looking back at the N64 sales of Ocarina of Time, and, and I'm just trying to look at, like, the kind of big zeitgeist games of these franchises back in the day. Uh, Ocarina of Time was at 7.6. Granted, it was later on in the N64 life cycle than Metroid was in the uh, GameCube uh, cycle, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong there. But it's also, like, I don't think Metroid has the same cultural zeitgeist going into 4 as Zelda did going into Breath of the Wild. You know? So, so here's the thing. I... I mean, I, I agree with you. They're not on the same level there. But having said that, Metroid Dread sold 3 million copies. Like, that's huge for Metroid. Absolutely huge. And so it's like, that that is a 2D game yeah. that is a sequel to, you know, that was like 15 years in the making or something like that. Then, like, that a whole lot of people don't even have any touchstone with. Like, absolutely. Th like, a lot of people don't know that this was a game that was long canceled, you know? Yeah. So I feel like that like is easily the best selling Metroid game, which then I feel like tease up like to your point, Barrett. I feel like this is as good of a time for Metroid as ever, and I feel like the longer we get away, it's not going to help it. You know what I mean? This is why we need a Metroid animated movie. Let's just fucking go to generate the hype for the next. Like, come on, man, give it to us. Give it to us. Let's check this out. Let's watch this one minute video of us reacting to the reveal of Metroid Prime Four. I am not getting any audio for some oh. reason. Give me a second. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Here, I'll just re recreate it. What? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's... It's... it's What a time. There's also a chance Nintendo just doesn't have anything for six months. <laughs> and that's it. They've done it before. They have done it before. It, You're absolutely just, right. I don't think they're going to want to do it again with Switch. Like we We haven't seen them do that. So... But I also think that they have a lot of other revenue sources now where back True. then that may have been uh, a bit more of an issue. And I think mm -hmm. now that they are kind of, they've got their hands in a bunch of different pots now. Totally. Am I wearing the same jacket? <laughs> no, it's not. No. No. Don't touch me. It's not happening. <laughs> Starfield? I think I might, need, I might need the notebook again here. That's how oh, long ago huh? I was saying Starfield. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe anybody anymore. They, is it retro? Oh, is it fucking oh, retro? Oh, now in development. Oh, whatever. And it wasn't retro, but now it is. <laughs> Man, I did it's not be retro. try anything with the backgrounds back then, huh? <laughs> it's just a lack of just a just a lack of trying. Hey man, 
<laughs> hey, you were new to the company. That was that was your first year working. Here's a kid. fucking PNG <laughs> I fucking on a white it. background. Oh my god, Dude, that was so exciting, man! Like that was that was crazy, and it's so funny that I, like I just wanted to know was it retro, and it wasn't. <laughs> god, oh man, we'll see if that game ever comes out. If it does come out, I think it will, but we'll see. Um, let's get to some YouTube super chats real quick. CJ splits on says Andy is your shirt by Brian Lee O'Malley. I believe it is, yeah. Yeah, technically a gooch. it would be. But I'm it's on like, a Gucci. Yeah. Gotta love that. This is this was like their Scott Pilgrim kind of collection or whatever. Very cool. Um, Andy, we, we went through so many big stories. But if I wanted to know the small stuff, every all the small things we need so to know, small. where would we look? Last story, the We News channel. Where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. We're falling apart at the seams. Some news for you here that's very small. We, in fact. Metal Gear Solid Legacy Series Part 1 featuring David Haters on YouTube. It's just David Hater kind of talking about the legacy of, of Metal Gear. And uh, it's kind of cool. Just like having a fun little look at all the different games, like breaking it down. Just like a fun retrospective series. I haven't been able to watch the whole thing yet, but I was like, oh. How long is it? Um, I don't know. Let me check. Let me find that out. Because I'm stoked to watch that. It's five minutes. Oh, part shit. One. God damn it. I thought Six it was minutes. like 48 yeah, minutes. Yeah, no, I think it's part one, so we're going to keep oh, going. But okay. I was skimming around. I was like, oh, I definitely bookmarked this for a little weekend watch. I wish it was longer, too. Did you watch Shogun episode four? Uh, dude, I'm two episodes behind. Oh! Yeah, I know. Woo! You watch Invincible? I'm also behind. I didn't watch it yet. Came back last night. What? Oh, yeah. Man. Man. They are fucking invincible. Fucking it up. <laughs> so bad. Figure what? It. I'm sure it's great. But the release strategy, figure your lives out what? here. Um, Squirrel with a Gun will be available on PC, PS5, and Xbox in fall 2024. Double Dragon Guide and Rise of the Dragon Sacred Reunion DLC will be available on April 4th, 2024. I think they need to add more words right there. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, of Lana will be available on PS5, PS4, and Switch on April 16th, 2024. Play that game. It's really yeah. good. Fun little game. It was. It's available. It has been available on PC and the Xbox, but now making its trip over everywhere else. And uh, there's a wild Final Fantasy 14 Xbox Series X giveaway that is really funny. Uh, Barrett, if you could bring this up. Um, this is the Series X that they are giving away here. Very Final Fantasy 14 inspired. But what's funny is it's not, it's just an art piece that isn't actually a Series X. It doesn't work. What? Yeah. So the winner also gets a Series X. <laughs> Are they giving you like skins to make your Xbox Series X look like that? I don't think so. They're just you you win, you get a Series X, and then you also get this art piece. Huh. So what a waste. We put that on fucking Nick's desk. It's gone within <laughs> two hours. <laughs> um, and that's it for We News, everybody. Now it's time for a little thing I like to call You're Wrong. Um, we got Apologize. Nope. Saying, got secondhand embarrassment to Tim's cringe reaction for Metroid Prime 4. Find some joy in your life. You know what I mean? That's all I have to say to you. Yeah. I'm not going to throw any hate towards you or anything. No vitriol. Just, uh, I, I hope at I some point I you will. enjoy something in your life as much as I enjoy a lot. Of I will. Dip your head in the toilet, okay? Fucking Holy take shit. a drink. All right? You piece of garbage. Piece of garbage. God. Again, just find love, man. Have some joy. Have some joy. Uh, but anyways, I hope you all find some joy, and I know where you can find it. And the answer to that question is if you're on Twitch, staying right here. But if you're on YouTube, making the jump over to kind of funny game showdown, oh. the season finale Woo! that we are about to do. It's very exciting. I cannot wait for you to see it, and it's going to be a good time for all. Will I win? You're going to have to find out. Fuck. Will I get fucked? You'll have to find out. Will it be somewhere in between? You'll have to find out. Like I said, if you're watching on Twitch, just keep hanging out with us. If you're on YouTube, make the jump over right now to the Kind of Funny Game Showdown feed. But until next time, I love you all. Goodbye.